Kia ora, Year 12 and Year 11. This is question 3E from 2014. This is a really, really nice question where you're given the graph of the gradient function and the function, but it's got a little bit more to it than the achieved merit easier questions on this. So I'm going to show you this picture first, but I'm going to do this question two different ways. Um, if you're trying to get excellence, I recommend that you follow through both of those methods, even if you saw one of them yourselves first. So we're given the graph of a function, g of x, which is this one here. Right, so this is a cubic, and it's a positive cubic because it goes like that. Um, and we have to figure out what is the value m? So what's the y value for the maximum turning point of that function g of x? Right, so this is what I'm looking for. My goal is pretty clear. My goal is to find g at x equals 1. Down here we've got the gradient function. So obviously the gradient function is going to be a parabola because it's coming from a cubic. So the first method of solving this problem is to find g dash of x. Right, and then we work backwards, we're going to integrate that and use some more information to find g of x, and then we're going to get g of 1. So that's method number one. I'm going to do that first, and then I'll talk about method number two. So let's start by looking at the gradient function. It's a parabola. We're going to use lots of ideas from level one, tables, equations, and graphs. So it's a parabola, and its vertex is here at 2 and we can see that it's been shifted down by one unit. So the only thing that's not obvious is what's the stretchiness or scale factor of that parabola. So we can write g dash of x is equal to some scale factor. Let's see. So we can say k of, well, actually, do we need a scale factor? Let's have a look. We'll write this first. So let's do x minus 2 squared take away one, and we're going to see if that works. So the pattern I'm looking for is the out one, up one, out one more, up three pattern that you'll remember from way back in year 10 or 11. So does that work here? Yep, it works beautifully. We can see that um, if we substitute in g dash of zero, we want to test whether this equation is going to give me the right value. So g dash of 0, using this, would be 0 minus 2 squared minus 1. So that equals 3. So a little happy face. We've found g dash of x, and we've done that very easily. So we want to move back now from g dash of x to g of x. We need to anti-differentiate. And we're going to do that by expanding first. So g dash of x gives me x squared minus 4x plus 4 minus 1 which gives me x squared minus 4x plus 3. Right, now let's go back now to the um, function. So g dash of x is the integral of, sorry, g of x is the integral of this. You don't have to use that notation, but it's nice to see it before you get to level 3 calc. So there's x squared minus 4x plus 3 integrated with respect to x giving me x cubed on 3 minus 2x squared plus 3x plus c. So that's g of x. Now, we want to figure out what that plus c is because our goal is to get to g of 1. That's going to be the value of m. Let's go back to the graph and have a look at what we've got. Well, we can see that the curve very conveniently goes through the origin. So g of 0 is equal to 0. So substituting in 0, we get 0 minus 0 plus 0 plus c. So c is equal to 0, and we've got g of x is equal to this. Finally, we're going to substitute in x equals 1, and we'll get g of 1 equals 1 third minus 2 times 1 squared plus 3 which is one-third plus one, or four-thirds, and that is the value of m. Okay, so that's the first way to do it. Um, I've only allowed 10 minutes on these videos, so hopefully I'll be able to squeeze in the second way. All right, but that's a good method, because um, typically g, of e, g dash of x, the gradient function, is going to be quite a simple functional form. It will either be a parabola or it'll be a straight line. 
But what I'm going to do now is I'm going to work with the equation of this cubic here. And the reason that this is easy to do in this case is because I can see the roots of that cubic. Okay, and especially if you're watching this from a school that did the level two graphing, you'll be very comfortable with this. There's one root, and here's a repeated root. So that means that the functional form of that cubic is just like doing factorized form with a quadratic, only with a cubic, is going to be this. G of x is going to be equal to some scale factor that we have to check, times x, and we've got a repeated root at 3, because it's just bouncing on the axis. Okay, so if you're confident with cubics, you can go straight to writing the um, form of a cubic here, g, dash of, g of x is equal to that. Now we're still going to have to differentiate, um, but we're starting from a different point. What we're going to do now is leave that k in there, go down to a clean bit of whiteboard space, and expand this expression, and then we're going to differentiate it and use some information from in here. So g of x is equal to kx times x minus 3 squared, which is kx into this. So kx cubed minus 6kx squared plus 9kx. We can differentiate that easily. That'll give me 3kx squared minus 12kx plus 9k. Now, we've got this equation. The only thing we've got to work out is what's k. So we need to get a point from the gradient function graph. So let's have a look at the easiest point to use. We're looking for a scale factor, so we never want to work from the vertex because nothing will have happened there. Let's use this lovely easy point here, which is 0, 3. We're going to substitute that in and use that to get information about k. So when x is 0, the gradient function value is 3. So 3 is equal to substituting. We get 0 minus 0 plus 9k. Very nice. So k is equal to 1 third. And we can now get the full expression for the function. g of x is equal to, remember it was kx times x minus 3 squared. But now we know that k is 1 third. Our last job is to figure out the value on the curve when x equals 1. So we just have to substitute in 1. So we get 1 third times 1 times 1 minus 2 all squared, and you better hope it's going to give us 4 thirds. So we've got 1 third times 1 times, oops, that should be a 3, negative 2 squared, which equals 4 thirds. Okay, so two ways to do that question. I've shown you both of them slowly, just in case these skills come in handy with other problems that you might have to solve.